Okay, we're going to solve two equations in this example video using the AC method. So these are quadratic equations, and our goal is to factor these, use a zero product property, set each factor equal to zero, and solve down. Now usually the solving down isn't that difficult. It's usually the factoring that's the troublesome part. So as you can see, our standard way to write these is AX squared plus BX plus C. That's the general form of a quadratic. Um, on the first one, 8x squared minus 14x plus 3, this is kind of a challenging one because we have the 8 out in front. If that was just 1x squared, this would be a little bit easier. All right, so as I said, this is referred to as the AC method sometimes. So what we want to do first is calculate what is A multiplied by C. I'm not really going to worry about the signs here, but in our case, A is 8 and C is 3. So 8 times 3 makes 24. I'm going to list that number off to the side and then write out all the different ways to factor 24. 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, or 4 times 6 all make 24. And that's all the different ways we can use integers to do so. The next thing that I'm going to focus on is I want to pick the pair that because this is an addition sign, it's a positive 3 at the end, because that's addition, I'm looking for the pair that adds together to make our middle number. I know it's negative 14, but I just want to focus on the 14 part. So 1 and 24 adds together to make 25. 2 and 12 adds together to make 14. So that's the one we're looking for. 3 and 8 won't work because that's 11. 4 and 6 makes 10. So the pair we're looking for is the one that adds together to make our 14. Now the AC method looks a little bit strange the first time you see it, but what we're going to do is we're going to bring along the first term, 8x squared. We're going to bring along the last term, the plus 3 in our case, but we're going to split up our middle term, that negative 14x. And we're going to rewrite it using those values we just picked out as coefficients. So 2x and 12x from over on the side, but now we've just split up one term into two separate terms. We have to be careful that if we combine those like terms back together, we get back to a negative 14x. So that leads us to use both negatives on these. So negative 2x minus 12 more x's gets us back to negative 14x. But what we've done is strategically rewritten our trinomial, three terms, as four terms. So when you have four terms, what you want to think is factor by grouping. What you do with factor by grouping is you group the first two terms together, and you group the last two terms together. And you really just focus on two terms at a time. The first two, you say, what do they have in common? They have a common factor here of 2. 8 and 2 are both multiples of 2. And they both have x's. So that's going to go as a common factor out in front. And then think to yourself, what do I need to multiply 2x by to get us 8x squared minus 2x? Well, 2x times 4x will get you the 8x squared, and 2x times negative 1 will give you the negative 2x. All right, for factor by grouping to work, as we move on to the second pair, what we want to do is end up with the exact same thing in that second set of parentheses as we did in the first. So sometimes if you just work ahead, put that in parentheses and sort of work backwards, it's handy. So in this case, I think to myself, 4x multiplied by what out here is going to make a negative 12x. Well, 4x times 3 is going to make 12x, but we need a negative to go along with that 3. So if we redistribute and say negative 3 times positive 4x makes negative 12x, and negative 3 times negative 1 makes positive 3. To wrap this up, what we want to do and complete our factoring is what's out in front of each one of these sets of parentheses goes in one set. What's inside the set of parentheses goes in the other set. And now it's completely factored. The only last steps we have to do to finish this one up are set each factor equal to zero and solve down as though these are independent equations. So in this case, we'll add three, move it to the other side, divide by two. So three halves is one of our solutions. In the other case, we're going to add one and divide both sides by four. So x equals one-fourth is a second solution there. Now let's run through the same steps, but this time, instead of having a positive constant at the end, we have a negative constant. And this technique is going to work 
If any of these quadratics are factorable, you can always use the AC method, which is very, very handy. So again, we're going to start out and we're going to compute A times C off to the side. In our case, it's going to be 2 times 15. And again, I'm going to kind of ignore the sign right now. All right, that's going to give us different information in a second. So A times C, 2 times 15 makes 30. And that's the number that we list the factors for off to the side. So 1 times 30, or 2 times 15, 3 times 10, 4 doesn't work, but 5 times 6 also makes 30 when we multiply it together. This time, though, because it's a negative constant, a subtraction there, you're looking for the pair that subtracts to make the middle number, the 7. So as you look at these, we could say 30 minus 1 only makes 29. That's not what we're looking for. 15 minus 2 makes 13. 10 minus 3 makes 7. That's the pair we're looking for. Or 6 minus 5 makes 1. So again, the pair that we were looking for subtracts to make a 7. So we're going to go with 3 and 10. First term comes down. Last term comes down. Middle term gets split apart. And strategically, we write this as 3x and 10x using uh, those coefficients that we just picked out off to the right. But this time, we have to make sure that when you combine these like terms back together, you get a positive 7x. All right, so to get a positive 7x, we want it to be positive. So the bigger number is going to be positive. The smaller number is going to be negative. So 10x minus 3x makes 7x's. Then we jump right into with four terms, factor by grouping. So the first two terms get grouped together. You say, what do they have in common? Well, it looks like just an x this time around. And then x times what will give us those two terms? Well, x times 2x gives us 2x squared. And x times negative 3 is going to make that negative 3x. The second set of parentheses, you want to end up with 2x minus 3 in here. So it's the same thing in both sets of parentheses. So in this case, I kind of think backwards, and I think 2x times what goes out here to make a positive 10x. Well, 2x times 5 is going to make 10x, and this time it has to be positive. So 5x, or 5 times 2x makes positive 10x, and positive 5 times negative 3 makes negative 15 if we redistributed. All right, to wrap this up, we get two sets of parentheses. In one set, we get what's out in front. In the other set, we get what's in common, what's inside that set of parentheses. And then to wrap this up and finish the rest of the way, we set them equal to zero. This is usually not the difficult part. The factoring is definitely the difficult part. Set them equal to zero and solve down. So subtract five from both sides here. In this case, we're going to add three to both sides and then divide both sides by two. So x is 3 halves is one solution. x is negative 5 is a second solution. Again, this method, the AC method, can help you factor any trinomial. All right, as long as it's a quadratic equation, um, follow these steps, get them down. It's really handy for getting good at factoring in a, a much speedier way than some other methods. All right, hope this helps. Good luck.